in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And eventually he got around to creating man and woman. And man roamed the earth. And time passed and Allah sent many prophets and teachers and katubs and friends to explain to man man's creation and man's purpose. So Allah fashioned man and woman and we are given lives. Now, what happens in these lives that we are given? And who fashions the life? Does destiny fashion the life? Or do we fashion the life? We are constantly given choices to make. We have been created, as we've been told, in the Holy Book, in God's image. Yet, when you look around and you see the inhabitants of life, the inhabitants of humanity, some don't seem to be very much a representative of God, a representative of Allah. Yet, others, in fact, very much seem to be representatives of Allah, representatives of God. What's the difference? These are lives that have been fashioned differently. These are lives that have been fashioned with different attitudes and with different intentions. There is good and there is evil. Allah created them both. We decide which we're going to incorporate into our existence. We decide which of these things we're going to use in order to fashion our lives. Even though I look much younger, I'm 70 years old already. And I uh, sometimes, with my wife, look back, because we've been together for so long, we kind of look back together, because we've gone through the same stuff. Uh, and we look at the twists and turns our life has made and we can see pretty clearly that we made certain decisions at certain times in our lives that took us in certain directions and made us the way we are today now no matter what age we are right now we can look back and see the forks in the road and the opportunities we had to take one or the other and the decisions we made as to which way to go. And all of these decisions have fashioned our lives. Now, everybody is looking for peace. Everybody is trying to find peace in their life. Some people are looking for peace of mind. There's another talk, and you can see it on the internet, on why there is no peace of mind. But that's a whole different point. The mind is incapable of being peaceful. Peace is found in another place. Peace is found in the heart and in escaping the turmoil of the mind. But how is it that we do this? How is it 
that we escape the turmoil of the mind which is attached to the chaos of the world which is attached to the constant chaos that illusion brings on how do we escape that how do we find that connection to reality so that when we do this fashioning we're doing it in the right way from the right source with the right intention connected to the universal source of things placed within each of us is a conscience and this conscience is attuned to hak attuned to reality attuned to the truth of things and when we can become attuned to that chaos dissipates chaos disappears why because there's no confusion any longer chaos comes from confusion and illusion the lack of confusion and illusion does away with chaos if you know what's right and you do what you know is right and it becomes automatic you're a different person than somebody who's constantly in trauma as to what to do next. So we have to begin if we are going to find peace to find our conscience. And we have to be able to do away with everything that covers this conscience, that veils this conscience, that separates us from this conscience. Now, what is it that separates us from this conscience? All of our attachments to the glitters and the hypnotisms and the magnetisms of the world that we give credence to as things that will be able to give us pleasure, peace, enjoyment. The illusion of the glitter. The illusion of the hypnotism. <coughs> the illusion of the magnetism the illusion that certain things that cannot give us peace will give us peace the misunderstanding of what takes us to where we want to be and the misunderstanding of not knowing where it is we actually want to be when you're traveling to Chicago by car or by foot you need a map or a GPS or some way to get there if you don't have a map uh, you're either going to be asking for directions a lot or you're going to be very lost in order to find our way towards our conscience so that we can align with our conscience we need a map we need a guide we need a guideline that guideline that guide will tell us what it is we need to do in order to get there and the first thing that we have to learn quite simply is the difference between right and wrong and maintaining the right in our existence once we understand the discipline of maintaining a certain attitude of activity towards other men towards our lord towards life in general we can then begin to progress on the path towards finding our own conscience now in order to truly be able to do this one of the things that we have to understand is that we do not know 
what we do not know. And it's a simple statement. It's a very difficult one to comprehend. There is lots that we don't know. And we can't act on it until we know it. Now, how do we begin to know it? How do we begin to learn it? It's a two-step process. It's knowledge and action. Just because you can say something doesn't mean you know something. Just because you can repeat something doesn't mean you are something. You can repeat the words of saints, but it doesn't mean you're a saint. You can repeat the words of the Bible. It doesn't mean you're a Bible. You can repeat the words of the Quran. It doesn't mean you're a walking Quran. So we need to understand that being is a large part of learning. Learning is not just words and regurgitating on tests. Learning in this path is becoming and being. And in that becoming, we are given direction, we are guided to becoming what is appropriate for man to become. And what is it that it's appropriate for man to become? It's a very short answer. What is appropriate for man to become is godlike. Man has to take on the qualities of Allah. Man was created in Allah's image. Allah has no form. Allah has no shape. Allah is the 99. The qualities are what Allah is. And in our formation, a connection to these qualities was made. And we need to find that connection again. And that connection is through living a life that is connected to the conscience, that is connected to the qualities, and that becomes those qualities and aligns in those qualities. I try to live my life aligned with the qualities of Allah. I try to live my life aligned with the intentions of Allah. I try to live my life according to the rules of Allah. I try to live my life in unity with the will of Allah. May Allah help me in this intention. May Allah put me on the straight path towards this intention. May Allah make it so that I understand and become aware of the necessity to be on this path for my own sake and for the sake of the ones I have contact with. Each of us needs to ask this of Allah over and over and over because the intention of the the, the sincere intention of going on the straight path will dissipate the veils that keep us from the straight path the sincere intention of going on the straight path will bind us so that we cannot commit aggressions that will keep us from the straight path. What keeps us on the path is God's qualities. What removes us from the path are the other qualities that don't belong to God. Yes, God created all of them. But we choose which ones to be involved with. We fashion our lives with these qualities. We can fashion our lives with compassion, or we can fashion our lives with anger. We can fashion our lives 
with mercy and generosity, or we can fashion our lives with greed and contempt. We can fashion our lives with disdain, or we can fashion our lives with love. So we become actors at inducing certain qualities in us. We become the ones who choose how to present ourselves. But the presentation has to be done with sincerity, and then sincerity will become reality and will become that which we insincerely intend because Allah in his mercy will grant us our appropriate sincere intentions and allow us to walk in his way. And when you walk in somebody's way, you bump into them. And what's better than bumping into God? Imagine. Imagine. So, to bring this up, to do all this, we have to understand that it is already hidden inside of us if we haven't found it yet. And we have to understand that it is Allah's intention that we find it. It is intention of the intention of all the holy books that we find it. It was the intention of all the prophets that we find it. It was in the intention of all the friends of Allah that we find it. So you have all of Allah and his helpers intending that you find this way and that you find the path. One of the clues that will show you what you have to do to find the path is something that Jesus said. He said, if you see me, you will see my father. Well, if you can't see Jesus, that means you can't see his father. So if you can't see the qualities that Jesus has, you certainly can't see the qualities that his father has. If you can't see the qualities that Muhammad has, you certainly can't see the qualities that his Lord has. So somehow, you have to be able to see those qualities in existence. And once you see those qualities, imitate those qualities, become those qualities. We were blessed to have a man with those qualities in our midst that we could watch and that we could imitate.